We're going to start taking a look at uh, Aperture 3 by uh, Apple and this is a photo management program. This is my preferred program of choice at the moment. I like version 3 a lot. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, today we're going to look at the basics of importing images and there's several different ways we can end up with the same result here. We can either go up to the file menu and choose import files or if you have a series of folders on your machine already with images in you can actually create projects from each of those folders upon import using that option. Then you can also go up to the menu here, uh, sorry, the icons, and click on import files. Or as you can see, there's also a keyboard shortcut, which is Command I. And another way that you can automatically kick this off is the way I'm going to do it here. Now, basically, I have a, a card reader attached to my laptop here, and I'm now going to put my my compact flash card in. And when I do that. Aperture is going to detect the card and it's going to pop up the dialog box and say, oh, hey, you want to import these. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do here. You can see that it's showing me previews of all of the images on the card. We have a whole bunch of images for the purpose of, of these videos. And, uh, you know, basically it, it'll give me destinations to choose from on the left hand side in the library here if I have any. Uh, I don't at the moment. This is a new library just, just for the sake of these videos quickly looking at the options on the right hand side here you can choose the destination which will be a new project which in this case is my only option because I don't have any other projects you put in here a project name so I'm actually going to give this project name here um, test files you can tell it to automatically split the projects via dates and that kind of thing very much like uh, iPhoto you can uh, tell it to ignore import duplicates. I'm not going to do that because I'm actually going to choose the shots manually here. Now, storing the files, you're going to get a lot of options here. You can store them in the Aperture Library file itself. Uh, that's normally what I don't do. Normally what I do is I actually have an external drive that I clone, so I have two copies of each of the images. But basically what it's saying here is you can choose a location to store these files other than the Aperture Library if you want to and at that point they become what's called referenced files. In other words, it references the location of the file on your hard drive. Let's say you have a folder on your laptop um, on the desktop called My Pictures. Well, if you put it in there, basically Aperture will point to those files in the My Pictures folder. It won't actually be using image files stored in the library. Uh, it'll make sense when you see it. Uh, so what you can do here is you can go choose, and that's what I'm going to do actually, and I'm going to go to my desktop here and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this Aperture Photos and press return for create so there's a there's basically a, I'll show you here there's a folder now on my desktop called Aperture Photos with nothing in it and I'm going to select that and go open now when I shot these files I used Camera Raw and a JPEG on a, a Canon EOS 50D uh, worthy of noting here that Aperture now supports the S RAW format on Canons as well, which is very nice, very useful. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say, since I have a JPEG and a RAW file of, of each of these shots, I'm going to import both. And you can basically have options here. You can say both and use the JPEG as the master, or you can say both RAW as the master. Honestly, if you shoot RAW files, I would go with using the raw because it's going to give you a lot more options for tweaking those files. You can go both with separate masters or you can import just the JPEG files or just the raw files. Honestly, if space is not a problem for you, I would go ahead and use both raw as master so that that way you have a JPEG copy of that file if you need it for something as well. Now, moving to the middle panel here, you know, you have your scroll bars, you have a couple of options to check them all and uncheck them all and basically what that means is, is you see this button down here import checked it's going to import the files with check marks so if I let's say I don't want to import any of them except for just maybe maybe this one file here I would uncheck them all and check there now it's only going to import that one file as you can see down here import one file into a new project now what I'm going to do actually I'm going to say check all and I'm going to go through and selectively pick the ones that I don't want because I immediately see that they're just not going to be usable. So for example, um, I'm not going to go with this one here. It's a little bit too light. Uh, I don't uh, mind the other ones there so much. I'm going to uncheck this one because I think that's too light. 
and I'm going to uncheck that one as well. Clearly this one is looking a little bit too dark so I'm going to uncheck that one. And they're looking down here you can see there's some severely underexposed and camera shake images so there's no point in me messing with those so I'm going to uncheck them so they're not imported. Same with these two here. Scrolling down a little further this one's a little overexposed we could probably get that back with uh, tweaking the camera raw settings so actually I'm going to leave that one there selected and let's just talk about these icons at the bottom here so we have grid view which is the default that you're seeing now I can click on the next one it's going to basically give me the detailed view you know frankly I mean it's, it's okay but I think that it's far easier to just see the, the preview images but this is nice in that it shows you for example the file here you can see the date and time the aperture the shutter, the ISO, and the focal length, and lots of other options there. You know, the camera model, the file size, the lens that you used. I used the 100 millimeter EF macro on that. Um, going across as well to the next one, you know, that's the viewer there. You know, but frankly, I would go with the grid view because it's the quickest, easiest way to see all the files. So I have no projects at the moment, so I will go ahead with the test files project. It's going to create a new project and it's going to import those files into the library. But remember, it's going to store the image files in that location that I told it to, the Aperture Photos folder on my desktop. So now I'm just going to say go ahead and import checked. And it's just going to go ahead and import each of those. And as it's doing so, it's creating the previews for me as well. Once the import is completed, you'll see it'll pop up this little dialog box here and it says 32 files have been imported from the card and you can either say, you know, don't show me this again. Uh, I always leave it set so that it does. You can just say done and it'll go away. But it will also give the option to erase the images from that card and eject the card or to just eject the card. Well, since I'm done with this card, I'm just going to go ahead and hit eject. So that's now ejected from the system. And what I'll do, I'll just switch to my desktop here. I'm going to hit F11. And you'll see that in the Aperture Photos folder, it actually went ahead and created the new project called Test Files. And in there are each of the images taken from the card. And here they are in the Test Files project, as you can see on the left-hand side. And if I go up here and I choose Projects, you'll see that we also have you know, a familiar sort of iPhoto view. We have like this, this sort of smart, intelligent thumbnail view and I can just move the mouse across there and preview the images in that project. So that's importing images. Next time around, we'll have a look at uh, viewing and navigating and reviewing these images and some of the ratings that we can do as well.